Okay, day four. And uh, today I'm, so I normally draw in the morning, like right when I'm kind of starting my day with the morning coffee, you know, morning light. Uh, and lately, like I'm always changing, but lately it's really been the best time for me. But today I'm actually drawing at night. It's about 7 p.m. right now. Um, and it gave me an idea for talk, for this monologue, um, which is this idea of procrastination um, in art and this idea of resistance. And I think like one of the most interesting things about this series that I'm, I'm doing is kind of showing a little bit about this importance of like consistency, discipline, and pushing through kind of this uh, procrastination that you can have when it comes to your to your uh, artwork. And there is actually a great author um, who, who I think was like a screenwriter or a playwright, um, and his name is Stephen Pressfield. And he wrote this book called The War of Art, and he describes the battle between an artist and their procrastination, which he refers to as resistance, is what he the name he gives it. And he says that this battle between the artist and resistance is really like the fight of the life. And he called, he, he equates it to like literally a war, like a struggle between life and death, between an artist and, you know, whatever it is in the universe that's kind of causing them to, to procrastinate or resist doing the work that they're going to do. And, and I think like, uh, so I, I highly recommend looking at that work a little bit and, and I'm, I'm getting rid of some of the poetry and some of the nuance in the way that I'm explaining it, but that's the general idea. Um, and I do think that there's like a, a decent element of, uh, you know, developing your creative ability and like, you know, in this series, I'm trying to kind of grow my, uh, artistic ability in some way. Like this is a, a, a series about, uh, learning and growth and improvement and in order to do that, you have to learn sometimes, or at least for me, I had to learn like tricks to play on myself, to get myself to overcome the resistance. And it's really unique for everybody. And I mean, you can look at so much content online or just talking with friends or, or peers uh, about like how to overcome procrastination. And there's so many different techniques, but the reality is like, Every, the reason there's so many techniques is everybody is kind of different and even one person can be different with how they overcome procrastination or resistance in different ways. Um, so for me right now, I actually never really used to draw in the morning. This is kind of new for me, maybe in the last, like, let's say six months or so. Um, and for me though, it's been super effective at helping me overcome resistance to what the first thing in the morning, devote myself to something that I want to work on. So in this case, my artwork, um, other techniques that you may have heard of are things like sitting down and just telling yourself that you're just going to do five minutes. Just start and just do five minutes. And generally what happens is at least after five minutes, you you kind of get in the flow a little bit and you end up drawing for like a long, longer period of time. And so it's really those first five minutes is like a way to trick yourself into getting started. Uh, and there's like this, yeah, it's, it's kind of an interesting process where you're managing yourself uh, in order to get a result that you want. Um, and so, yeah, this whole concept is super interesting with resistance. And it's really something I think that almost every artist face because the reality is like motivation and inspiration as as amazing as it can be for creating artwork. And it can be it can be amazing in terms of like as a way to channel your creative power when you feel inspired and motivated. Um, it's not enough. It's not enough to develop your art, art or creativity uh, in the way that many of us or like, for example, as, as I want to do, if I relied only on motivation and inspiration, uh, I wouldn't even be a quarter of the, of the level, like whatever my level is now, I wouldn't even be 25% of that level because, uh, the reality is like inspiration and motivation is so fleeting. Um, and it, it's so subject to, you know, like principles, like the, the, the more that you, uh, like the deeper you get into a project that you feel inspired or motivated by, generally that motivation inspiration begins to dwindle. It's like almost the fact of life. Like I've run into this so many times. And so relying on inspiration and motivation is almost never going to lead you to the end of a project. In fact, to me, that's where the resistance comes up the most. And maybe this is all another topic, which is like finishing multi-day projects or long projects. Um, but I would never be able to finish these projects if I'm only relying on motivation, inspiration. Um, and in fact, you know, like I, I think that my 
personally, like, as I said, I'm, I don't, I don't know if I've talked about talent yet, or if we're going to talk about talent more, but I, I don't consider myself an incredibly talented artist. But what I, one thing I do think I have like a really, I do have, do have a decent talent for, or at least that I've developed is discipline and consistency. Um, and so I can lean on that to try and get some kind of improvement in my artwork. Um, and so anyway, all this is to say that today I didn't feel like drawing at all or doing um, the kind of like daily video, but here I am doing it. Uh, and so I'm gonna jump now into the drawing. And so what we'll work on today is, I kind of want to do a continuation where I want to focus on a bit of a block in um, and pick, you know, a head that's kind of at a weird angle. And I think I'm also going to do process. So I'm, I'm, I am kind of recommend personally against, in my experience, I don't like to emphasize more than one thing at a time in a practice section. So like if I'm going to do a drawing, I'd rather just focus on process. But what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to do the process that I've been talking about but I'm gonna cut it short. So I'm only gonna do the first five steps. So I'm gonna do 2D construction, 3D construction, uh, block shadows, mass shadows, and then um, do the edges, but I will not go into any half tones. And so I'm gonna kind of pull back a little bit on the process and also pick a uh, head pose that isn't, let's say like a bit dynamic and try and capture this gesture and this dynam like dynamism uh, like I did in the in the previous drawing. So we're kind of working on two things at once, which is not always the best thing to do, but I think since I'm kind of pulling back on process, we'll be able to get away with it. Um, but let's see, we'll jump in and uh, we'll talk again after the drawing.
Okay, so drawing is finished. Uh, it was about an hour and a half drawing, which is a little bit longer than most of these sketches. I think I'm normally aiming for about 45 minutes to one hour, uh, but it makes sense given like this was kind of a difficult, difficult drawing. Um, so uh, my assessment of this, so I have two kind of things to assess on. Um, first is, one is process and the second one is gesture. Um, and I'll start with gesture, uh, which was something that I was like, it's kind of interesting to merge these two things because I'm not totally sure where to merge gesture in. So like the most obvious place to capture the gesture of a pose is in the 2D construction and the 3D construction phases, like when you're first blocking the drawing. But the counterintuitive part is that naturally, as you advance through a drawing, you tend to diminish the gesture. Uh, and it's it's kind of this like weird counterintuitive effect that happens that really seems to affect like almost every artist. It's possible some people can get away with it, but generally speaking, the more you work on a drawing, the less gestural it becomes and the more rigid it becomes. So if you just put your gesture in, for me, if I just put my gesture in at the beginning of the drawing, by the time I get to the end of the drawing, a lot of that gesture has been kind of erased and gone away and I have to re-implement it. So I found myself working on it in the 2D construction, 3D construction phase, but then also actually using the edges. Um, and even at that stage, kind of refining some of the construction, even changing some of the lines to reintroduce some of that gesture. Uh, and I think actually generally it's quite, it's, it's somewhat successful. Um, I think that like the drawing really captures the pose in the sense of you can tell the angle that the head is going and like that is looking at and that she was kind of looking down and I have the kind of like shoulder indicated. And I think generally like the, if someone saw just the picture, they could like understand what was happening in the reference, just the drawing. They could understand like what exactly was happening in the reference. Um, so I'm, I'm actually pretty happy with that. And I like that I kind of learned this process of, you know, working in the gesture in the beginning and then reworking in the gesture at the very end. Um, and then I just totally abandoned it and didn't even think about it in the middle. Um, and then, so with process, uh, so I think like the, the process I've really, so I'm probably, I would say I've probably done t close to 20 drawings because I've also done drawings that are not on camera. Um, probably close to 20 drawings now thinking about this process. And I think, you know, the, uh, the trope is that like 21 times of doing something is what builds a habit. Um, and I think with art, it's literally 10 times that it takes 210 times to, to build a habit. Um, but I do think that, you know, in terms of the levels of understanding, I now understand the process to the point where I don't have to really think about the steps. Like for sure, I know the order of the steps. I know what each step entails and I can go through this without checking any reference or anything. So it's, it's thoroughly memorized. Um, now I would say, you know, in terms of levels of understanding after memorization would be something like internalization, which means that it becomes the natural way in which you're drawing when you want to draw in that way. Um, so even under time pressure, even when you're not even thinking about it and you're just kind of idly putting the, the pencil down on paper or painting or something like that, you're inherently thinking about this process, even subconsciously. Okay, first I'm going to do a 2D construction, 3D construction, think about shadows and then edges and half tones. Um, and so that would, that's the next level that again, I think takes hundreds and hundreds of drawings before you finally start to understand that. Um, I mean, it depends on, on what you're practicing, but for me, I think it'll take probably a hundred drawings before it's really internalized in that level. Um, if I decide to take it that far too, I could abandon it after 50 or 75 drawings um, and just leave it at the memorization stage. Uh, and then after the internalization would be where you start to like understand these ways where you can potentially break the rules. You understand it to the point that you understand where it came from and how you might want to change it. So, you know, as an example, it could be that you're working on a particular drawing and you're going through this process so naturally and you understand that, okay, even though I'm only on step three, I'm only blocking, sh blocking the shadows now, if I actually start to think about edges now, it will make my drawing more successful. So I know where to break my process uh, to, to have a better outcome. Um, and, and that's like way, way down the road. So anyway, these are some of the things I was thinking about with respect to, to, respect to gesture and process. Um, and then lastly, I'll say, you know, I ended up having like a really enjoyable long drawing session, hour and a half drawing session, 
um, that started with all that resistance in the beginning. And I think that like, that's kind of showcases this example of like, the resistance is the war that you have with yourself. And then as soon as you can kind of overcome that, you'll be into the drawing. And I imagine that this is a theme that's going to come up tons and tons over the next hundred days because it's, it's supernatural. Like, I don't know what percentage of days I have resistance, but it's a, it's, it's maybe not 50, but it's a lot of days I would say. Um, but I guess we'll see actually, we'll think about it. Okay. That sounds good. That's all for now.